Hello, Michigan Gardeners. This is Doug at Buzzard Family Farm. We're located just outside of Marshall, Michigan uh, on Verona Road. Um, it's fall now, uh, end of September, and it's a good time to dig and divide peonies. So if you've got a peony and it's getting really big, you can leave it alone if you want to, but if you want to get some divisions and move it somewhere else, get more peonies going, or if you've got a friend you want to give a peony to, um, I'm going to go through that today, how I go about uh, digging and dividing the peony. So you'll need your tools. Um, obviously, a spade. You're going to have to have that. Um, you're going to want to have your clippers so you can cut down all the foliage first. Um, you will notice this summer that um, a lot of the foliage has mildew and black spots and some of the foliage on, on some of my peonies that are in a slightly more shaded area actually went very black a couple weeks ago and I cut the foliage off uh, because it wasn't doing any more photosynthesis. It wasn't helping next year's buds or anything. Um, but that's just based on the summer we had. We had um, a couple of weeks where we had heavy rains, late June, early July, and then the end of August was extremely hot and humid. Um, those were all great conditions for different fungus and mildews and things like that to um, really prosper. And the peonies, some of them look pretty rough. But it's okay at this point. They've, they've done their, their job. They've photosynthesized and nourished next year's buds, which I will show you. There's um, eyes, eyes they call them, underneath the ground on the tubers, tuberous roots that they have and it's ready to go. Um, you can go ahead and, and dig and divide it. And the fall really is the better time because the peonies are going dormant now. This allows them to really get off to a running start in the spring when they're one of the first um, plants that starts to emerge and they need a lot of energy to do that. So if you're trying to divide in the spring, you're really catching them at a time when they're really starting to do a lot of work and that's, that's tough on them. So first things first, just cut it down. This one here is uh, called Festiva Maxima. It's uh, white with a little bit of um, purple maroonish crinkling in the um, center of the bloom. Um, it's, a, it's a really nice one. If you uh, subscribe or um, get anything from White Flower Farm in, in Connecticut, they're a big mail order place. Uh, high quality stuff. They, they featured this one on the cover of their um, garden magazine at different times. So get in underneath and cut, you know, down to the ground. Leave, you can leave an inch or a half inch or so. This peony has probably been here, I would say, 20 years. Um, I don't need to dig and divide it if I don't want to, but I can, and I'd like to have a few more Festiva Maximos to sell in the spring. So what I'm gonna do is I'll replant some of them. Instead of just one, I think I'll make a grouping of three of them. Uh, you know, a couple feet apart, foot and a half apart for each of the roots that I replant. And then I'll put the rest of the roots into um, three gallon pots, which is the size, the only size that I find, the smallest size that I find that you can put peonies in and have any success with them um, flourishing in a pot. Their roots are just simply too big for a, a traditional one gallon or two gallon size pot. So if you're looking for peonies in the spring and they're potted up, um, really look for peonies to be in a large size pot. That, that means that person that grower gave that peony the best chance possible. If it's tucked into a one gallon pot, a small pot, um, sure, you can have luck with it, but you may not have flowers for two or three years because it's probably a very small piece of root that they put into that pot. You can clean up underneath it at the same time too get rid of the weeds that might have grown underneath. And 
that stuff's all going to go to the compost pile. Um, and it can and de decompose and whatnot. Um, but you can see you're down to just maybe inch high stems at this point. And based on the size of this peony, it's going to be an effort to get it out. Um, you'll find that too. You are going to have to cut through some roots. Um, you're going to hear them break when you try to pop it out of the ground. And you know, you want to have your compost ready. I've got some compost here. Again, my recommendation or what I use is about 50% horse manure to 50% potting soil. Potting soil doesn't really have anything in it, but peat and bark, good, good uh, aerators for your soil. Nothing of real nutritional value, but the horse manure will have good nutritional value. And I'm planting this for the long haul. You know, when I replant, I'm not going to be able to get underneath it again and get some nice compost in there again. Uh, again, it was here for 20 years. I'm hoping once I replant it, I don't dig it for another 20 years. So you want to get your nutrients in, you want to get your compost and your soil amendments in at that time. You can certainly top dress with it afterwards, but it's much better to have it right there underneath the roots mixed in so the roots can take advantage of it. So I just go around the peony and lift a little bit as I go around. I'm going to move this drip irrigation out of the way. And again, this is going to come up hard because it's been here a long, long time. Peonies the roots will go several feet deep. And they're going out much further than I'm um, cutting into, but I know I can't I can't get all those roots and I'll probably do some root trimming once I get it out of the ground anyways. So then I'm just gonna go back around and again try to keep loosening it. I prefer to get it out all as one big clump, but I may have to, because this clump is so big, I may have to cut through the middle of it and bring it out in different chunks, maybe a couple of chunks. But there it goes. Got a little bit of bee balm. If you have any bee balm, you know it likes to wander and it's kind of coming into the peony a little bit. And so I'm gonna find a spot for that bee balm when I'm finished replanting all. Or the bee bomb. I think I got all of it out of there now. And so this is this is the size of this 20-year clump. And again, 20 years ago I bought this cutting from an online source in the fall. And you know, it, you just get a little tiny bit of a root, and then over the years it's just grown and grown and grown. So at this point. I just take a soil knife and again, any way I can get it apart without disrupting the roots too much. And it's going to be tough because this thing is really wound together. So I keep dropping it to shake off the excess dirt. But then I can take the soil knife and start to break apart and get smaller pieces. That's still too big a piece for a pot, and you could certainly, if you wanted to be generous to your neighbor, give them a piece this big, they should be thrilled. I'll bring it up closer so you can see. Here's an eye right here, this white eye, and here's eyes over here. And usually when you're buying it from a mail order, um, they'll say, 
anywhere from three to five eyes. Um, so when I'm doing it and putting them into pots, I like to, for our customers who buy peonies in the spring, um, I like to have more like seven or eight eyes if I can. So when I break it apart, sometimes when you get it down to this, you can start to just tease it apart. If not, take your soil knife or whatever your favorite tool of trade is and try to get that apart. So that one there I can count one, two, three, four, five, six. There's probably some eyes down underneath that. So that's a decent size for me to plant into a three gallon pot. And so that's what I'll do with that. And next year, if I'm lucky, I'll get it to bloom in the pot and then people are more likely to buy it because they can see the bloom. Um, sometimes it takes another year for it to bloom in the pot, but a lot of times I can get it to bloom in the pot the first year if I put in a substantial enough amount of root and this is a good amount of root. You can see how tuberous those roots are and, and where I cut this off when I did the soil, when I did the spade down through, I just simply couldn't get all those roots out. Uh, they go, like I said, several feet in different directions and down. Um, it's a very resourceful plant. Um, this one here, again, would go into a three gallon pot. I can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I can see eleven eyes. So again, if I wanted to be more stingy about it, I could break this apart more, but I'm trying to sell people a good sized peony um, so that they're off and running with their peony and they're not waiting. Again, with the mail order ones, you, you might get some blooms the first year, but you might be waiting two, three, four years because the peony really is a long hauler. It's one that wants to get in place, settle in, and then it'll flower heavily for you for years and years without, without dividing. I could have left this in place for another 30 years. So I'm just gonna continue to try to break apart this, this peony. And again, if you wanna be generous to your neighbor or you wanna just move them around yourself, you could replant a division this big. Um, but I'm not going to. Um, I'm gonna divide it up a little bit more and again, add some compost and then put three reasonable sized divisions in. So I, instead of having one Festiva, I've got three Festiva Maximas going there. Um, but this one can be broken up a little more. And it, it, you are gonna lose some eyes, <laughs> not your eyes, the eyes on the plant. You are gonna lose some of them in doing this. There's no fail safe way to get these roots apart so that you don't end up wrecking some of them um, but if you've got a good division like I think I may replant this one um, it's gonna have a hard time going into a three gallon pot um, but it's gonna make a nice substantive plant in my garden again I'm gonna replant that these guys here a little bit smaller so I may take those two that broke off from that one and plant them you know a foot and a half away and then they will grow together and almost be like one plant over time. Um, but it'll get it uh, back up to size a bit faster than if I just planted something small. So don't be shy if you've got a peony and relatives or friends have been noticing it and they would really like you to give them a piece of it now is really the time to do it. And you can see some of these pieces are just breaking apart really nicely. Others, you're gonna have to work at it a little bit. And when you get it apart, you may have something like this, which is still really big. You can be generous, or if you wanna um, divide it and spread it out and have even more peonies, if you've got a big area, um, you can certainly do that. But I've gotten one, two, three, four, five, five to um, put into pots for next year. And I'll probably get a couple more off this. There's six. This one, I'm not sure it'll go in a three gallon, so I'll have to try it 
maybe seven. But that's peonies. Um, next time I'm going to take you through the garden and show you what some of the pollinators are for this late season. Uh, just a quick update on the bees. Um, they're doing really well from what I can tell. Um, but my bee tutors or my bee teachers have have encouraged me to start feeding them. So I am giving them some sugar water uh, on a daily basis and, and they are going after that pretty hard. Um, but I'm gonna look in the hive here in the next few days and see um, if they're building up. Um, lots of honeycomb and um, honey for the um, winter because they're gonna need that to get through the winter. Um, we're not harvesting the honey this year. We're leaving that for the bees so that they can hopefully make it through the winter. That's the biggest problem for bees here in the winter is that they starve. There's, there's simply nothing to pollinate and get uh, any food from. So it's what they built up in their stores, in, their, in the frames within those boxes that keeps them alive. Um, and then later in the spring, you can start to feed them again with some sugar water uh, if you feel like you don't have some early pollinators. But here at the farm, we, we really do have a lot of bulbs that come through early grape hyacinth and, and daffodils and things like that. So we really do have some things that start to kick in in March and April uh, that they can start to pollinate and, and start to build the hive back up again for the, for the heavy work during the summer. But I'll, I'll take you through the garden, um, the next video, show you some pollinators, um, and then I'm gonna um, take you over to the hives for another video and just give you an update on how they're doing and at the same time show you uh, an update on the strawberries. Um, I think they look pretty good. Rose a little bit thicker than I wanted, but um, that's what the next couple of videos will be about. So um, if you're out in the garden working, these are great, beautiful, sunny days, 75 degrees. Um, awesome time to do work, to do work with peonies or other perennials that you can divide and transplant now, daylilies and things. You can, you can do it in the fall, water them in once, really forget about them and in the spring they're off and running without having any transplant shock because you, you did that in the fall. Um, so see you next time. Take care.